struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. We are locally underwritten by the Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. And today we are excited to learn from Kevin Peterson of Peterson Technology Group. So Kevin, how are you doing today? Doing great. It's a beautiful day out there. A little bit cold, but that's okay. It is, yeah. It's winter in Wisconsin. What do you expect? What are you going to do? Yes. So, Kevin, I've known you for probably the better part of a decade, maybe Something more. Something like that. And I don't know your story. <laughs> so, how long has Peterson Technology Group been around? We are in year 18. 18? So, October of October 15th of 2004. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. It's been a wow. fun ride. I love it. Um, um, I wake up every morning knowing that I and my staff now are making a difference. Nice, very so, cool. And how many staff do you have now? So we have a mix. We have a 24-7 support desk. So we've got um, basically, that's a sort of a shared and a cooperative you know, um, situation with other companies. So we have, we're staffed you know, over 40 for that, but then I've got a good local team as well um, for on-site work, you know, troubleshooting, mm -hmm. installing new computer networks, um, project management, things like that. All right. Um, and, and then also just, there's always, for flex stuff, a couple subcontractors as sure, well thrown sure. in the mix. So it's a, it's, a good, it's a good group. So let's start with when you first got started. So 18 years ago, yes. <laughs> you decided, screw this noise, I'm going to start my own IT company. What was um, the noise going on? Well, actually, um, uh, 18 years ago, uh, so October 14th, I got let go of um, my prior company that I was trying to start. There were four of us partners, um, okay. one majority partner right. um, who held 55%, and there were some issues, ended up being some ethical issues, and it was done. So we were trying to come up with an amicable solution where I could exit gracefully over a period of months. Mm -hmm. I happened to um, find out one afternoon that um, that was going to be my last day. Oh, so by it, the way. <laughs> it, exactly, by the way. Um, and I had the name Peterson Technology Group, um, email um, and domain the next morning, and I had three clients to start with. Wow. Um, and so I'd like to say that I had a lot of thoughtful planning. Um, I had a great business plan, and I knew what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. No, I had I had uh, four kids, I had a wife, I needed money, and I had three clients, and so I started a company. Wow. So the, the company prior that just kind of went south more or less, was that an IT company as well? It was. We were doing a little bit different th things, so we were doing more nationwide some you know um, high-end project management um, staff a lot of staff augmentation on uh, government you know projects um, all right so very little similar similarity to what we're doing today okay and how long did that gig go for uh two years so okay. bit, about, about two years or so so a little while so, yep a little we, we tried two years i imagine it was it was with a former boss of mine uh, right. who was the owner and we were trying to do some things they just didn't work out the way i wanted them to and mm -hmm. you know he owned the company so it was his decision and sure. so that's where i decided and one of the partner decided it was time to step back and step out right. um, again i was hoping for a little bit longer duration again when you have four kids and uh, family and you know house mortgage you, you, <laughs> you want some notice but i got about four hours notice so right. you know, <laughs> ready or not here you, know, you go deep in well the nice thing while I, don't, I can't say I was happy at that point. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have started Peterson Technology. Um, Fair. I, I am not a risk taker by nature. Um, All right. I'm calculated. I like to plan out sometimes too much. And so um, I got a kick in the butt mm -hmm. by being let go. I had no choice. And so that's why I started you know, the second company. Um, All right. Similar, the, the first company. So the first company that I started, the only reason I started that was I got let go from, or my contract ended. I had a long-term contract with the state that ended October of 2001. Okay. Well, if you think back, you know, 20 some odd years ago, what had just happened? 9-11 had just happened, you know, a month yeah. before, um, and the horrible, awful tragedy of that. You then deal with the economy had tanked. Mm -hmm. Well, the IT economy tanked even more than the normal economy. No one was hiring. I was interviewing for positions right and left. I came in first and numerous, but they decided, Stop. We're putting the brakes on. We can't hire because I don't know. We're not going to be around potentially All in right. six months. So Y2K didn't cause anything, right? <sighs> it wasn't Y2K. It was 9-11, <laughs> really, right. you know, and just the fact. So I spent through March or April of 2002 studying, 
um, getting some certifications, um, trying to find a job, and I had a um, younger, you know, three kids at that point, including one who was uh, pretty young, so I spent a lot of afternoons reading these really thick books that put you to sleep, but I had a nice sunspot, and I was able to snuggle with, at that point, my young daughter. Oh, nice. And so I took plenty of afternoon naps while trying to figure out, and then around April, May of uh, 02, that's where I joined this first startup All right. for a couple of years. So when you went to your wife and you're like, mm -hmm. hey, I can't find a job. I'm going to start my own gig with these guys. Yes. Was she like, great? That sounds like a fantastic idea. Or was she like, are you sure you applied everywhere? <laughs> my wife is an angel. Um, <laughs> I don't deserve her. <laughs> um, um, she was on board. She, okay. she had more of that entrepreneurial spirit, more from her parents. Mm -hmm. So her, um, her mom was a school teacher um, for, I think, 39 years. Wonderful lady. Um, her dad, though, owned a small business uh, doing, um, you know, uh, in the fire industry, as far as you know, uh, checking fire detectors, you know, um, you know, oh, within, yeah. within companies, um, s you know, um, servicing them, items like that, and so that was his own company, um, and so had that background. I, my parents had that, and so I wanted that, but again, I'm not the risk taker, as I oh. told you. So she was on board. She trusted me. Um, that doesn't mean it was easy. We, um, you know, three kids at that point. Um, um, and including, you know, one in high school, I think one in middle school, and then a, a very young one at that point. And our, you know, if you will call it fun money for the month, was about 25 bucks a month that we would go to Taco Bell once a month. Wow. And that money was given to us by a friend. We, our budget could not afford it. We, well, we didn't have any money. At that point, I hadn't, we hadn't saved anything. Oh, so no. That, some really smart financial moves. Yeah, wow. Okay. Um, we had, so we had very little savings. <laughs> All right. Um, had, um, you know, mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, we had some bills, other bills. Um, at that point, we had two cars. We decided to take one off of insurance. We didn't drive it. Actually, it ended up having some issues anyway, so we couldn't sell it, but we just stopped driving it. So we shared a car, um, and we struggled, and we survived. We still look back. Now, now it wasn't the same back then. We, we weren't smiling and saying, this is fun. But we look back. Some of those times, going to Taco Bell and just enjoying it once a month, the family bonding mm -hmm. with the three kids and Barb and I, it's amazing. And we still look at those times and just say, those are some of the best times, even though I mean, we're scraping by on zero dollars coming in for over half a year. All right. And with no planning, which I should have done, mm -hmm. but I hadn't. And so my wife was a stay-at-home um, mom, and so she was not bringing an income either. And so, yeah, we had zero dollars coming in for over half a year. And, wow. and we survived. All right. Um, there were times that... Um, Friends, unknown friends, we had money show up at her door. Oh, wow. Still to this day, don't know who it was, but it was the exact amount that needed to cover checks that basically had R or B, you know, in, in the note so you knew yeah. it was going to bounce. Yeah. And just the exact amount we needed that month. Wow. So. Um, That's cool. It was, it was great times looking back. It was not fun going through it. Oh, I bet not. <laughs> <laughs> but. That's part of the story. That's part of what made me who I am. That's, uh, that's the whole thing, right? Yeah. Someday we're go all going to look at this and laugh. Exactly. How about today? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Going through it, you don't laugh. Afterwards, you can laugh. Yeah. I get it. You survived. Chalk it up to experience and move on. Exactly. That's cool. So you start your own gig and you... This is 2002, 2004? Well, 2002 is when I joined the, the, the first company that we were okay. starting. In 2004, I started Peterson Technology Group. Gotcha. And did you bring along anybody from the other? No. You um, just walked away? I just, I just walked or away. Or got kicked out? <laughs> One of the, the two. I was on my way out. And again, I mentioned there were some issues and struggling, so yeah. I wanted it to be a couple months separation. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I, I left at that point All right. um, and had three clients. Um, that was, an that was a division that they stopped doing because I was trying to lead that. So they stopped doing it, and they were fine with me taking these three clients. It wasn't, okay. it wasn't that I stole them. They were, they were fine with them leaving because mm -hmm. that was not a core part of what they wanted to do anymore. Right. So again, I had three clients um, day one, and uh, we did some fun projects for some big companies at that point then. Okay. Um, so bigger IT projects, it's got to bring in some cash to level the... Yep. The ground a little bit. Or yes. Feed you at least. Well, well, at, at that point things were doing better. Yes, we were we were doing more than Taco Bell than once a month. We could afford some groceries, and right. we had the second car at that point. So right. um, yes, yeah, so things turned around um, from a you know financial perspective in, in that first company is where the turnaround sure. started. So that first company um, from a you know, providing the income we needed, um, you know, did, did what it needed to do. It was, it, it took a few months to get off, you know, off the ground. The first paycheck I got from that first company was June of, the end of June, 2002. There were two of us, both of us in similar situations, except I had three kids, he had one. Mm -hmm. um, we split $600. 
Oh. So he got 300, and I got 300, and we both ran to the bank to cover stuff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first paycheck I had in about nine months. Wow. We're getting sour cream on our tacos. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big day. Uh, no. no. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> just, just not the, yet. Just the free sauce <laughs> packets. <laughs> not but, yet. <laughs> but, but it improved. I mean, that was early, two, right. that was early to mid-2002. I, I stayed there until October of 2004. That company was doing very well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, they were able to provide for me. We had, um, you know, um, you know by, by 2004 when I left, we had, um, you know, our fourth child, um, you know, um, you know, financially, um, though that company didn't provide health insurance. So I've also gone through paying for everything for a birth from a child. And that is very pricey, let me tell you. Not something you want to go through when you're not insured. You paid cash to have a kid. Um, well, yes. Wow. Yes. You don't want to do that. No. No, you don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, all right. But we, we weren't, there were no insurance benefits at that point. Our insurance started uh, the next month. Our, oh, nice. Yes. Nice. Hold, <laughs> hold on to the kid. Uh, well, that, that's not the way it happens. No, so I get it. I get it. from the time you, t you know you're pregnant, if you don't have insurance, you pay for the kid 100%. Oh, there's no just like, hey. Buddy, At least that's what it was. You know, he's now 18, so 18, 18 and a half years ago, right. that's, what, that's what it was. You know, it's interesting. I read this book. Um, I want to say it was a great game of business or something mm -hmm. of that nature. About this guy that has a machine shop for big mm -hmm. Caterpillar engines and all this yep. kind of stuff. And he's complaining about the price of health insurance. And I'm like, I got this book at the library for a buck. I'm like, it's not new. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the publishing date. It was 1992. <laughs> I'm like, they were complaining about health insurance back then? You know, so, everyone, it, it's a standard and that's life. I mean, you know, there are things apparently. I can change and there's things I can't. I can't change that. Right. So I'm not going to spend my time, you know, complaining about yeah, it. Yeah, it was, it was just interesting. Yeah. That from, you know, this book, all the stuff that's going on, he's talking about employees, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Health insurance was still an issue uh -huh. back then. So, yep. I don't know, it's just one of those weird. People always have something to complain about. I'm not saying that it's not, oh, yeah. I'm not, saying it's not <laughs> legitimate to talk, complain about health insurance. Yeah. I'm just saying that if all the problems that we have today going on, you know, are solved, there will be new problems. Oh, we create some. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then there's problem solvers to come up with a solution. That's mm -hmm. why the, the people who can innovate, um, you know, and help with solutions, you know, save time, save money, save people, mm -hmm. um, that's great. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our society rewards, you know, those people. Um, and th those people have the ability to do things that I can't do. I'm not an innovator. Um, I've been wrong on almost every prediction, um, you know, back to when Microsoft Windows first started. We do a lot of work with Microsoft Windows. Yeah. I'm showing my age here. I've worked on stuff prior to Windows being, you know, um, released. I right. thought Windows was not needed. There well, was something funny. called Microsoft DOS, and that's what everything ran on. Mm -hmm. um, it was you know, Windows wasn't needed. A mouse wasn't needed. It was a waste. And so I've been, I've been wrong on every single technology prediction in my life. That's fair. I'm I'm right there with you because I remember seeing someone that had a kind of a tablet, I don't know if they called them tablet, but the little scribble pad yeah. with a pen. Yes. And it was that or a mouse. And I thought, why would anyone get a mouse? Uh -huh. The scribble pad's way more practical. Exactly. Uh, iPhones were dumb, I thought. iPad, who needs that? I had a, yeah. I, I, I had a, a CD player, mm -hmm. you know? So, but you know, um, <laughs> there, there are early adopters. I'm just not one of them. Fair, totally fair. So you start your business, you have your customers. How or when do you decide, hey, I should probably market to grow this thing? So that was late. Um, so again, we've been around, we're in year 18, um, and I was a solopreneur. Mm -hmm. So it was, I was the only employee for over a decade. Um, I had some, really? sub, I had some subcontractors. Okay. So I, we had some long-term projects. I had a friend, Stuart, who was a subcontractor for probably about two, three years on a, on a project we did for the university. Mm -hmm. um, did a lot of fun things, um, and we made a lot of you know, good money. We, we did a lot of great work and fun projects, but Something wasn't sitting right in me. It wasn't. It wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, okay. While I love working on technology, I love dealing with clients and doing what's right for the clients, and we are doing that. I just felt that I wasn't making enough of a difference. Mm. Remember, I, I mentioned when we first started that I wake up each morning knowing that at Peterson Technology, not just myself but my staff, we're making a difference. Mm -hmm. That was slipping. Oh. I really didn't feel like we were making a difference. Okay. The, the clients we were serving were the larger enterprises, and this is not a knock on any of the large enterprises. I just didn't feel what we were doing were making a difference for them. All right. And so because of that, 
I started talking to people. Um, I hired, you know, um, I had no clue what a business coach is. I know that you do great stuff. I didn't know of you, and you were actually weren't around at, at yeah, that time right? coaching. <laughs> so I hired a great business coach about nine years ago, mm -hmm. um, and um, been working with her since then. So she's still my coach to this day nice. on things as far as marketing. Mm -hmm. um, I thought sales were evil. Um, you know, oh. <laughs> you, know you, you think of salesmen, for me it was the used car salesman, sure. you know, the, the, the slick stuff from the movies. And that's not knocking used car salesmen because they're neat and they're very good. Mm -hmm. I just had mental trash in my brain. Well, you're as probably far not alone there. No. Right. So uh, I've bought plenty of used cars and, and I think all the salespeople that I've dealt with have been great. Um, mm -hmm. We just bought one uh, from a client of ours about a year ago and it was a great experience on a used car. I just had mental trash mm -hmm. about about it, and so I was, you know, figuring what I saw probably in movies type stuff, or just someone had told me about. That's what sales was. So I hated sales. I hated marketing. I, or I really, I didn't know what they were. I didn't know what numbers to track. I didn't. I thought any revenue was good, not necessarily good revenue. I didn't know the difference between top, you know, um, line money and bottom line profits. Mm -hmm. Realizing that you want to make sure you have both. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't Vanity and sanity, right? Exactly. You, you want the bottom line because that's what you can grow with. That's how you can hire more people. That's how you can serve more clients. If you're not profitable, you cannot expand to serve more. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned and still learning a lot of lessons. Um, and we've actually fully revamped our business twice um, since, oh, since oh, actually we're in the third iteration at this point. Um, wow. from, we've, we're still dealing with technology, right. but the clients we serve and how we serve them. Mm -hmm. and we're happy about it. So mm -hmm. the last big shift was um, almost four years ago. Um, we stopped chasing every client. We okay. started to focus on typically service you know, um, industries mm -hmm. um, that you know, small to medium sized companies in the Madison area that just need IT to work. They don't want to have to worry about the latest you know, virus or, or you know, ransomware event. Um, and when they have a problem, they want as needed support and they want a trusted person that they can, or, or team that they can outsource to. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that's our focus. We're not going to take some of these giant, large companies necessarily and do a, a, a fun, sexy project just to you know, stoke our egos. Um, and we're just going to deal with clients that fit our niche. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll take a couple here and there um, at times because some relationships, but we focus on small, medium businesses in the Madison area that we can do all their IT for them so they can just focus on their growth. All right. Um, and the changes we made allowed us to not only stay in business, but thrive over the last two years. It's been tough for some industries. Mm -hmm. um, it's been tough for some companies. We've had growth um, and we've helped our clients through struggles. So our rates have gone down as clients had you know, issues in you know, 2020 and some in 2021 um, with the pandemic. And so because of our relationships, um, we had no clients go out of business. Nice. Um, we had some clients, you know, temporarily and also permanently, you know, let go of staff. And because of that, our rates went down for them. Mm -hmm. um, but we've also had some clients thrive during that time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but it's been, sh it's been learning the shift. It's been learning, um, you know, what, what we need to do, um, how we can do it better. Um, and for me, I have realized I need advice. I, uh, I don't know everything. I'm very good at a few things. Mm -hmm. And for the rest of it, I outsource to trusted advisors, people like yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, um, again, I've known you for yeah about a decade. You know, you, you, you obviously need quality, you need people who have experience. But I knew nothing about sales. I knew nothing about marketing. I knew nothing about being a a um, good employer or a, a leader or a boss. Oh yeah. You know, we've all heard of you know um, what people call you know certain bosses. I was that guy. Oh. I was the yeller. I had, you know, unrealistic expectations. All right. I figured that my way of delegation was, here, get it done, and you need to read my mind to know exactly how it needs to be done. Oh. Well, that's pretty stupid, to be fully blunt. It's not <laughs> ideal. It's, stu <laughs> it's stupid. Let's be, let's be honest here. I had to learn, and my coach has helped me through that. Mm -hmm. um, some um, people who have left because of me, mm -hmm. um, and some bad hires that I've made because I've hired the wrong type of person. We were talking before the show started, you hire on culture. You mm -hmm. hire on fit, and you find someone who's trainable and teachable, and they'll be there forever. Mm -hmm. And so you invest in them. So I've had to shift over the last probably a good five, six years of hiring people and doing it all wrong to now we have a system, mm -hmm. and now we're hiring the right people, and we're training on some of the skill set if they're lacking in that you know, a certain skill set. All so right. um, I love the people we work with, um, and I like to think I'm at least getting on the stage of being a better boss or, sure. or leader. <laughs> or leader. Oh, we'd both like to believe that. <laughs> yes. I'm trying. I'm trying. It's a, it's a journey. I like to think that I'm getting better, but yeah, employees 
our challenge, being a good manager, a good leader, sometimes you're just like, I don't want to be the micromanager. Yes. Uh, but on the flip side, how could you mess that up so bad? So I get it. It's a challenge. It, it is, but you, you talk about messing up so bad. Um, it, it, it's funny. It, it's hard for people like you and me who are, who are leading people to let people mess up. Mm -hmm. But where I've grown and learned the most have been some really big mess ups. My, one of my biggest you know, technology mess ups has been I brought down a whole lot of the UW system, um, UW-Madison network in the middle of the day once. Oops. <laughs> there was no proof change. It was either Wednesday or Thursday afternoon, about 3 p.m. Um, and I brought Bascom Hall down. Bascom Hall is where the chancellor sits, the vice chancellor sits, the whole graduate school, the provost, the vice provost. There's a whole lot of classes there. So almost anyone who's anybody at the UW-Madison has an office there. Mm -hmm. And I single-handedly brought them down in the middle of the day. All right. And the nice thing is a couple things. I knew exactly what to do to get them back up. So I called a gentleman who worked there called Jim, and he, I, I told him exactly what to do to get them back up and running. I said, I'm going to call your supervisor to tell him why you're leaving your current job. So I called his supervisor, Joe, and explained what I did wrong. So I fessed up, first of all. I didn't try and hide the smart. situation. Very yeah, smart. Very smart. I probably could have hid what happened. I fessed up, and so that got things up. Within the hour, Bascom Hall back online, I did not get let go from that contract. Because, you know, I had a long conversation with my supervisor, obviously, to this will never happen again. But I had, exp I proactively went to her and explained the situation as well as her boss, um, what I'm going to change for my process for planning and notification. And I realized I just had to be a better engineer mm -hmm. at that point. And so do I want my engineers to take down a Bascom Hall network? No, but they'll learn a lot if they do. <laughs> or when they do. Really fast. <laughs> M mistakes happen. Right. And it's how you react to them. And mm -hmm. so one of the hardest things I've learned as a leader is to let people make really big mistakes. Mm. Because if you make a really big mistake, you have two options. One, you can deny it. Mm -hmm. And just you won't learn from it. And then in that case, you'll probably be let go. Right. But it, you can learn from it. And if you learn what you need to change internally, then you've made, learned the lesson. All right. So... I like it. It's, it's hard. It sounds easy, but you know as well as I do, it's hard because you deal with client satisfaction every day. Every day. And yeah. I'm one of your clients. Mm -hmm. you know, so if one of your staff messes up, am I going to be happy with you? No. And who am I going to call? Me. And I'm going to yell at you, right? Yeah. I mean, it, you don't want that, but mm -hmm. your staff will learn something, hopefully. Hopefully. You know, from yeah. that. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I always say if, if I get a call from a client, it's past the level of mistake <laughs> that they should make. <laughs> It could be. Yeah. It could be. I mean, there's every once in a while, I get clients, I guess, that just have me on speed dial for, <laughs> I think they just need a friend. I don't think I've ever called you about a, about a problem. No, with any very, so, no. So but that's good. The majority of our clients, if, if I get a call from them, I know, well, we messed up. And on, a, on, a, on a grand scale, which means you just got to fix it. And you take responsibility. Mm -hmm. You talk about, you know, what we did. You, you know, I've learned um, one of my jobs, you know, has been, you know, you call the client. You explain, you know. We messed up. Mm -hmm. You know, sorry. Um, here's what we did wrong. Here's what we're doing to fix it to make it right by you, mm -hmm. James. And here's what we learned and what we're changing for our processes. My company is very big on process because we oh. support people 24/7. Have to. And so uh, a tech 2 a.m. on Christmas morning has to be able to do the same thing as a tech Tuesday at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. And so processes and documentation are key. And so I can talk to you if we messed up something for you how we're fixing our internal processes. Right. And then, odds are that you'll be fine with that, as long as we don't continue doing the same dumb thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, systematize everything. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, have to. Yes. It's interesting, because we'll take on a client. We have a client now that we're having a hard time with, because we'll ask them, they want us to price a product. And we're like, okay, how do you price this product? Well, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, we need to create a black and white process so that all of our crew know, and if we get yes. more crew, we can train them. Mm -hmm. And if you say, hey, we did that wrong, we can say, well, what part of the system didn't we follow or it needs to be tweaked? Yes. Instead of like, hey, you didn't read my mind right that day. Exactly. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> no mind reading. Exactly. No mind reading. So it's interesting. That's a, that's a huge thing. Huge thing. Mm -hmm. So 18 years, you got your first employee, you said 10 years in. <sighs> Probably close to... 
seven-ish years ago or so. Okay. Been, so All right. I'm bad with dates, so about seven, sure, ballpark, about seven just, six or seven years ago. There's yes. not a quiz at the end, so it's not a problem. Good. So when did you decide, or what was the triggering moment for you to decide, I got to get some I got to get some help. Sure. So part of it was, I, I mentioned the reason I, 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 you know, went to a business coach was I, I was no longer satisfied with what, with what impact we were making. Okay. So yeah, the quality of the work, the, the, we had some really fun projects, but I didn't feel like I was making a difference anymore mm -hmm. through Peterson technology. And so I was going through the thought process, do I want to end it and get a job? I'm a horrible employee, so that really was out of the mix. All right, <laughs> so all right. I had to come up with what did we want to do, and so a lot of that first couple of years was trying to figure out how could we make a difference, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, once we figured out what I, what we wanted to do with the company, um, realized Kevin couldn't do it all. All right. So the first hire was actually an excellent administrator. Okay. So um, she was taking over details. Um, I am not a great, you know, follow through of, of keeping doing the same thing over and over, you know, um, detail person. She was. All and right. so she was doing things that I was letting slip where I didn't care about or didn't matter. Mm -hmm. She took care of them. So first was an um, administrator because the rest were using a lot of subcontractors to do the work that I couldn't do. Okay. Um, and so that was our first hire. Um, and, and I don't think we hired a full-time technical person until a couple years later. Oh, wow. After that. So, okay. Because um, we hadn't known what we were going to do. We were still doing a lot of big projects at that point right. and hadn't made the shift to focus on small, medium companies. So mm -hmm. a lot of what we were doing, similar to how, you know, uh, 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 construction, there, 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 there's the prime. Mm -hmm. We were one of the subs. All we right. were one of the subcontractors okay. um, for that. And so, you know, a lot of times you use subcontractors on construction jobs. We were one of the subs, and I was using subs as well as needed for projects. I stopped doing as much of the subcontract stuff after we started being the prime. All right. But we're the prime for a small, medium company. So we take care of all that integration, working with the vendors, mm -hmm. things like that. Well, at that point, I needed staff. It wasn't because I couldn't do it 24-7. There was also too much work for one person to do right. it. And if I wanted to grow, I have to focus on relationships. Mm -hmm. I have to focus on leading the, the, the team, um, You know, figuring out what projects to bid on. You were talking about bidding for a new client. Yeah. Um, and, and relationships. Mm -hmm. And so I had to step back from doing a lot of the day-to-day -day and trust the staff who are doing the day-to-day, -day, whether it's operations or the technical side of things. All right. I want to talk, I guess you alluded to it a little bit, about getting the projects for the bigger stuff. For a one-person show, that had to be tough. It was tough. Uh, the way most of those projects came was because of relationships I had built um, over the years. I've learned you don't burn bridges. Mm -hmm. um, and so most of the subcontract work came because of two or three key relationships I had. They, were, they worked for larger IT companies in town. And they would win a project with you know one of the bigger companies you know or or you know um, university systems or state systems and we would do the actual work. Oh, so gotcha. we were that okay. subcontractor. So we were doing the work. It's a lot of these were year long you know a couple year projects that we were doing, building out these big networks, putting in voice and video systems, um, a lot of security work. We were doing the work, at, but we were subcontractor through that um, prime vendor, if you will. Got it. Okay, so. that makes sense. That makes sense. I, when I had my printer repair company, getting into the bigger clients. It's tough. Oh my gosh, or government stuff. It was such a headache. And I remember, I remember one, I put in a bid that was so low. It was essentially <laughs> a test to see. Like if I put this for free, or like I'll pay you to give us the, the job. Uh -huh. Let's just see what happens. And of course we didn't get it, which yes. thank goodness we didn't. I don't know how we would have. Like, mm -hmm. It was set up so that I could not make money, but I wanted yeah. that. It's probably an ego thing. Mm -hmm. Or a quick way to build revenue. You were looking at the top line. Kind of thing. As, so, you, as we talk, top line, not bottom line. Yeah, it was one of those, like, I, I want to build, so let's just figure this out. But it was also one of those, I don't think there's anything I can put in here to get my company to get that. I feel like the it's decision's tough. already been made. A lot of them, they already are. Um, and Or at least it's skewed or you know, mm -hmm. towards a company or a person. Um, we typically don't bid on things like that. Okay. Um, we, we will at times, we, we have a couple larger clients that we do some work for. Typically it's because of a relationship that we've had. Mm -hmm. We still do a little bit of subcontract work. We're building out a um, SharePoint internet site for a UW school at this point. Okay. We, you know, we got that because of a relationship is what was introduced to us and we showed them the quality of our work and they fell in love with it. And right. so we just started that project last month um, and so yeah, we don't bid on, on the big ones. It, it's not our niche. Um, we'll take a couple side projects here and there, but very few at, at one point. Yeah, it's such a headache. It is. 
It's so well, time consuming. <laughs> it's time consuming and you can make a lot of money. So I'm not knocking doing it, but it comes back to remember why I, I said I wanted to you know, make a change. Mm -hmm. We want to make a difference. If we are enabling our clients to, whether it's a nonprofit that deals with human services mm -hmm. or a automobile dealer who you know, sells and services new and used cars um, or an accounting company to you know, do yours or, or, or the authentic business you know, taxes or whatever it is, we want to enable our technology to be more efficient to get them time and money back. Mm -hmm. So we are making a difference. Yeah, I may not be the doctor who's you know, um, doing surgery, but we are important to enabling the professionals, the professional service organizations, the nonprofits to do their job, to do their mission for our nonprofit mm -hmm. clients. And we enable them, we keep them secure because everyone hears of the latest crypto or virus threat or right. ransomware event that's going on. Um, we protect from that and we allow them to get more time and more money back. I'm mm -hmm. big on efficiency and effect effectiveness. You, you don't want to waste time doing something and you want to do it as effective as possible. Sort of the lean methodology that mm -hmm. um, Toyota um, you know, championed decades ago in, right. in, in Japan. If you can get better at something core and critical one second a day or one minute a day, that's awesome mm -hmm. if you're doing that every day. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's uh, you know we've tried to figure out that lean methodology in the service side. Get one minute better every day on a certain thing. It doesn't sound like much, but how many minutes is you know um, over a year? Oh yeah, it's forever. If yeah. you're saving you know 200 minutes on one task by the end of the year, that's gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the so, the quarter degree yeah. turn on the golf club, right? That exactly. Be... Well, I don't golf because. <laughs> I, I, I injure people, <laughs> yeah. but uh, we shifted to small, medium businesses because we knew that we can make an impact All and right. we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, because if they get hit, you know, by by a virus, if their whole system is ransomware, the average ransomware payout these days is five hundred seventy thousand dollars. That's the average. That's the average. How over many small half a million dollars? Over half a million dollars is the average. Um, Oh it, my it's, gosh, it's a thriving. Take my stuff, I'll start over. Well, that's what actually happens to over 70%. All right. So if you don't, you know, actually, it's a thriving business because a year ago it was about 300000 Oh, wow. So Everything's <laughs> going up. Inflation is crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Getting hit with ransomware is pricey. So wow. it's our job to make sure that doesn't happen. And, and so we're making a difference because if we're keeping small businesses going, it's not just the businesses. It's like my staff. By them keeping going, by them you know, keeping secure, by them growing, they are providing that health insurance that I didn't have and I had to pay for my fourth son on my own. All right. They're able to take their kids out to more than just Taco Bell once a month because a friend gave them 25. That 25 right. bucks I talked about, that came from a friend. Wow. We didn't have that. They, they committed, it was a friend from Stoughton, they gave us a $25 check every month that they should have fun with it. If they didn't say have fun with it, we would have put it to bills. Wow. So by us focusing on small, medium businesses, we are making a difference by keeping the companies open, by them growing, they're hiring more people, mm -hmm. and they are making more of that profit so they can expand. Yeah. They can expand, they hire more people. Mm -hmm. Small business drives Wisconsin's and the nationwide growth. Fair. Totally fair. And you know that. You're a small business owner. You talk to them around the country, oh, yeah. um, your impact. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's us small businesses that drive the economy. Mm -hmm. And I know you are making a difference, and we're making a difference in them. And so, yeah, it sounds odd that for an old geek, I've been doing this for three decades. Yeah. For an old geek, I still wake up, I'm making a difference by what Peterson Technology does every day. I get it, though, because I, I tell yeah. my crew every day, I'm like, what you do a lot of times like a lot of our clients don't necessarily say thanks or show appreciation how you would normally, but I'm like, that's because I consider you an employee. Yes, a trusted You're, partner. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. Except there's a trust factor in there that yes. you, don't, you don't necessarily have to show, say thank you or appreciation kind of thing because you are just doing your job and you're so good at it. That's a non-issue. But some appreciation for employees and for trusted partners is needed. I, you right, know, I mean, I guess and that's I not my nature. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm more like you know, what you're saying that you know, just success was doing it right and moving on. But I was actually my coach you know, yesterday morning just said, you need to stop, smell the roses, and celebrate the win. Mm. So actually on our whiteboard in the office just yesterday morning, I wrote you know, on the top, basically win wall and we're just going to start oh, you know, nice. small wins to All big right. wins. We're just going to start putting them on there. All um, right. And then not only the wins, but what are we going to celebrate them? So if we have a milestone, you know, so a rock or a quarter goal, and we hit it, what are we going to do to celebrate? 
Mm. Why not? You got to have some fun. Got to yeah. enjoy it, even if it's something. Even it's just a lunch, an employee lunch. Yeah, it's something. All right. So, is everybody? Is your crew all Madison based? Um, a, a lot of our crew is Madison based. Okay. Um, our, our support desk is not. The so, reason I yeah. ask is probably fairly selfish, because my crew's all over the place. And so we're like, we should have a holiday party. Mm. How do we have a holiday party it's with tough. everybody's all over the place? It's tough. We did, and, uh, and it was. It, it was good from a bonding perspective. We did a virtual escape room about a year ago. Virtual escape room? Oh, it, it was good because we were all together. It was right. horrible because think of an escape room virtually. Yeah. <laughs> it, so I, I can't blame the company. They were trying to make money. I mm -hmm. mean, they, they, had, they were shut down for in-person. And so the way they did the this escape This was a real escape this room? This was a real escape room. Kind of videoed around? What well, he had a, um, a smartphone on his head, if I remember correctly, sort of you know, like a construction light. And he was going around. We would tell him, go to the right, look there, zoom in. Oh. It was horrible, but they were staying in business. All right. And we you were- adapt. We adapted. It wasn't- I would never do another virtual escape room. <laughs> <laughs> But, but we at least enjoyed ourselves, and we had a good picture at the end. All right, <laughs> so, fair. yes. <laughs> we ended up Zooming, and one of my crew is a big trivia person. She okay. goes trivia. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she does trivia or attends trivia once a week. But she ended up putting together this nice. holiday movie trivia thing. It was a blast. They're fun. Yep. It was a blast. It still wasn't as cool as clinking glasses in person. Yep. But... But now there's more of that. I mean, you know, and getting back to things like, you depend on if you're remote or not. I mean, if you have a full remote staff, it's harder. But yeah, you can still do some virtual yeah. things. You can send, you know, um, you know, food to people's houses these days. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's ways to do that. So you can pay for the pizza or, or Chinese or whatever, and, yeah. and you're good to go. Yeah, I've tried, <laughs> tried that. I was just like, go out to eat somewhere, send me the bill. <laughs> and that, guy, that was clunky. Yes. So You want to make it simple. I'm trying. <laughs> Try. Yeah, just go to Taco Bell. I'll give you a gift. Here's 25 bucks. Feed your whole family of <laughs> six. Supreme. <laughs> supreme. Yes. So, what have been some of the things that you've learned, I guess, over the course of time, as far as how IT has changed? Because I mean, Dropbox wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, was it 17 years ago? I'm trying to. The internet was way different then. Yes. I mean, I imagine ransomware is more like five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> there was no such thing 18 years ago as ransomware. Yeah. yeah you're right. Um, so some of the things... Dial-up was too slow for it, right? Well, yes. Part of the issue is now, I mean, everyone wants a gig speed. I mean, you can do a whole lot more um, w with the security threats um, and issues that are out there because it's so available. There are nation-state governments paying people. They're in high-rise, you know, cube cubevilles in foreign states hacking eight by five. That is their job, round the clock. Wow. And they are trying to get into your network or you know your 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 mother-in-law's network mm -hmm. um, a, a, at home, and it's shifted. So it used to be targeted. They didn't like you, um, or you were part of an industry that they didn't like. Mm -hmm. There's still some of that going on, but right now it's all about the money, which is typically in Bitcoin. And so they want your money, either you as an individual or your company. Um, and if you think of it. If they can get ten small businesses, um, you know, to pay, you know, a smaller ransom versus, you know, one medium size, it's much easier getting the small, and, and they'll pay as well. So it's actually more profitable going right. after some of the small, medium businesses than some of the larger ones. So uh, more of the threats are actually against the small, medium businesses these days for a couple reasons. Typically, it's easier to get in. All right. Because you don't have, you, you may be trying it by yourself, or I've got a friend of a brother who mm -hmm. used to be able to spell IT, and you know he, yeah. he put together our network ten years ago, and it still works for me. Well, I could get into that one, mm -hmm. and so it's, that's not secure. So um, you you deal with that, and then you deal with people that just don't know any better. Um, a lot of my job is to educate, be on things like this, or or you know uh, educate on what you need to do from a security perspective and why, and then show them how they can do it, whether they do it on their own or they have us do it. Doesn't matter, but here's what you need to do so your business is protected. All right. Um, and so, but you were talking about what's changed. Yeah, a lot of it's been the security threats. There were threats, but it was a lot harder, and they were more targeted. Mm -hmm. The internet is everywhere um, mm -hmm. these days, and you can, it's global. Everyone has Microsoft 365 or Gmail. Um, there's you know VPN, so you can you know mask where you're coming from, and the threat surface is international for everyone. Right. And so it's about limiting that threat surface um, is, is one of the key things. Um, but I'd say the biggest thing has just been the, the threats you know, out there. They're everywhere. Um, and um, I mean, big companies, the government's being hacked at times. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got pipelines being shut down. 
Um, you've got HR systems. Um, you know, my, the, the company my son works for, um, their HR system went down because it was hacked um, oh. before Christmas and it's still down. All right. Well, it's an interesting one. I was thinking, like, what would we do if a time clock went down? You go to manual. Yeah. I mean, it's Or you go out things. of business. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> we still pay the employees. Yeah. I remember I had a few websites that were hacked. And it's funny because it, I was like, these websites, they're for um, way, 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 way infant clients that were in this business starting class. I mean, if those websites had five visitors in a month, it was monumental. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who? One... How did the hacker even find this website? Yes. Because the rest of the world apparently hasn't. Mm -hmm. And what is the goal? I felt like, was this practice? For, is this like the job interview at Hackerville? Well, it could like be, junior level. One, I had um, someone who called, it was either last week or the week before. She was a solopreneur. So she right. has a full-time job, um, or, or, or she has a job, on, but she's you know, trying to get a company up on the side. Um, and she found out recently that her website had been hacked and her email redirected to a foreign country. Um, oh, okay. And she was getting no leads. Oh. Think of how well your businesses would do is if you had zero leads coming in. Yeah, that's in. a big deal. So I put her in touch with a, you know, a great website person um, to make some changes. Has to be secure. Um, it hadn't been touched in years was the problem on her website. And she was... She was at the point, do I just shut down my business because I'm not having any revenue coming in oh. on this. And so um, that's, I guess, the focus and the impact. Um, so she is not a client. She's not a right fit for us, but I was able to get her in front of you know, some experts who were a better fit for her on the website side. But, but yeah, the impact is it's financial. Mm -hmm. If they can get a lead coming to, you know, that, that's thinking it's coming to, actually it was a Sun Prairie um, company, if I remember correctly, uh, coming into a Sun Prairie company, but it's pretending to be overseas, that could be revenue for them. Dang. It's all about the money for the almost all the time for the hacking. All right. Beyond some foreign state stuff. You hear of the foreign states trying to shut down other foreign states. Beyond that, mm -hmm. um, it's about how much Bitcoin can you get. All right. Yeah, it's interesting that when our websites got hacked, this was probably, I don't know, five years ago maybe? Ouch. Yeah, there was no, there was no request for money mm. or anything like that. It was just, um, I think they were redirecting to advertising sites. Yep. Or something like that. Probably getting paid by click type Maybe. stuff. So if someone went on yours and got redirected elsewhere, they might get a little bit I'm per like, click through. We didn't through. have any traffic. <laughs> they didn't. They may not have known that. Maybe. So I'm like, yeah. Sorry, you got an extra twenty clicks that month. It was just. It was weird. Which isn't a lot. But remember, there are people who are doing this. This is their full time job. All twenty right. clicks doesn't sound like much, but if it took them two minutes to do that. Oh, I hope not. And if it just <laughs> well, I get, I get it, what it's you're simple. Saying. Because yeah. there's automated scripts. They're running automated scripts. They're not doing it manually. They're right. automating. They've got, th there's automation going on. And so they're looking for weaknesses. When they find a weakness, they have a known program that exploits that weakness. They don't write something custom each time. You can, anyone can buy ransomware. It's for sale on the dark web. You just tell, you know, people um, how much you want to pay, what you want the ransomware to say, and what industry you want to target. Wow. And it's written for you. All right. Now, hopefully the FBI will arrest you for right. this, but on the dark web, you can do that. And, you know, that's how a lot of it goes, is done. It's just, it's just recurring. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of, again, I, I know I've said this a few times, but a lot of what we do is, is talk about why you need to secure yourself and how to do it. It changes. It used mm -hmm. to be buy Norton, buy McAfee, buy some antivirus, and that's all you needed to do. All right. That was it. Nowadays, if all you have is an out-of-the-box antivirus that you bought from your computer or wherever, you'll be hacked. All right. Guaranteed. Dang. I always felt like Norton was more of a virus than some of the viruses. Well, <laughs> it, it slowed your computer down way much. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, so. That was way back then. <laughs> yeah, so it was horrible, that whole suite. So yeah. no, no one liked it. But it did a good job of protecting you back then. <laughs> so, but it slowed, it slowed you so you were very the computer's ineffective. computer's not hacked. It's unusable. <laughs> yes. They oh, forced you fun. to upgrade frequently. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So what have been some of the things that you've learned over the course of time as from a business point of view? Um, I've learned and I'm still learning. Okay. So I'll qualify everything that I will tell you that I've learned. Yeah. I'm still in process. Fair. That's part of why people ask me, you've had the same coach for almost a decade. Are you that dumb? And it's not, well, well I am a slow. Question. <laughs> well, Part of it, because we pay coaches yeah. a good amount of money. You mm -hmm. are worth what, what your clients pay you. I know that. Mm -hmm. It's um, b 
but you provide a great service. My coach provides a great service as well. Mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot. So I may be learning the same thing, but I'm four steps down from when I learned it three years ago. So right. I made progress. So I made, mm -hmm. so, you know, it, it's, a, it's a ladder as far as getting to that expertise and then beyond mm -hmm. of it. So um, I've learned that I don't know a lot. There's a few things that I'm great at, um, but we've outsourced some of our marketing. You know, right. uh, search engine optimization, things like that to professional companies and people who can um, figure out what's needed on our website, mm -hmm. figure out, you know, um, who, you know, type of list to call, um, you know, uh, figure out great content. Now, we're writing some of the content, but as far as getting it out in front of the right eyes, mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you the best ways to do that. All right. I have people who do know how to do that. Um, we outsource our bookkeeping and our financials. Um, um, we outsource our legal services as well. We outsource actually everything except providing technology services. Perfect. That's that about the only thing that we have mm -hmm. that we don't outsource because we're great at it. Right. But every other professional service that you talk about, we don't own our own building. We rent. And so we've got a cleaner that comes in. Is there stuff that we could do? Sure. Why? There's people who do that, they do it much better than we do, and it's not worth our time. Mm -hmm. So my time and my staff's time is valuable. Agreed. And I want us to be focused on either clients, mm -hmm. on my staff getting better, so sort of that education, continuing education side, um, or planning, what are we gonna do next quarter? You know, how are we gonna improve systems? You, you talked about, you know, it's all systems, mm -hmm. systems, systems. How do we improve our systems? Get that one minute better today. And so we outsource everything right. beyond what we're really good at, which is you know providing you know that that high end you know technical support, um, project services, and the security. So the security, education, consulting, and protection for small medium businesses. Yeah. The rest of it we have partners. Nice. Um, why should I try and reinvent the wheel um, when there's an expert? Mm -hmm. Fair. Totally fair. Yep. What do you see for your business in the next five, we'll call it five years. Technology is changing too much to go beyond that. Yes. I will not make a guess as far as technology All because right. as I've told you before, I'm wrong on Fair. most <laughs> of those. But a lot of it is, you know, some of the shifts that we've seen over the last two years. It, the, the, the shift of people working from anywhere had already started. Mm -hmm. Two years ago in March, it accelerated because there were um, um, industries, um, think of call centers. Most call centers were um, working in a secure facility for mm -hmm. privacy reasons. Well, in March and April, May timeframe of 2020, a lot of them went home. Your and they were working yeah. from home. And so regulations caught up, mm -hmm. um, contracts caught up with that. So the shift for continuing to work from either home or elsewhere. So like you said, you have employees all over the country. Mm -hmm. That is now easily done as well as keeping employees and your data secure because of technology. You can have people overseas as well, mm -hmm. um, depending on relationships and contracts, if you know desired, and, and we have some clients that have that. And so the ability to hire people or work from anywhere, now you have to figure out culture. There's still something about to be said about being in person, having a one-on-one -on -one oh, staff definitely. meeting, being around a, a table, joking around, or having lunch, mm -hmm. whiteboard planning. So you have to figure out from a leader perspective what's needed from a hybrid, in-person, remote. But I think that shift of people being able to work from anywhere, any device, mm -hmm. whether you have a you know an iPhone or larger you know screen, um, a Microsoft Surface, or if you need you know if you're in the office, you need four screens. Mm -hmm. um, being able to do your job anywhere, there's less need to be in the office from a technology perspective. Um, security is going to be, um, you know, continually changing. People are going to have to realize that what's being done today is not what's going to be needed two years from now. Mm -hmm. And then again, in, you know, another two years, um, you're talking five years. So security, the biggest thing with security is the education. We've right. learned, we educate our, our, our client staff and they want to do the right thing. Okay. They want to stop the phishing emails, the, the, the uh, fake Amazon returns that everyone's getting. We show people how to spot that they're fake. Most people, I've found, at least at our clients, are dedicated employees. Mm -hmm. And if we train them a little bit, they will do a better job of not clicking on things they shouldn't click on. And right. so it's going to be what type of security, but it's still going to be the education side of things. Um, and artificial intelligence and you know, more machine 
deep, oh, sure. deep learning. Yeah. Um, so I'm not talking about like the Terminator, you right. know, <laughs> um, yet. type stuff. I'm hopefully not around. It's 2029. <laughs> <right? laughs> yes. So I'm not talking that or, or, or what was the Will Smith movie, the iRobot. iRobot I'm yeah. not talking about that. But, you know, you, you, you see now some restaurants have artificial intelligence doing certain tasks. Mm -hmm. They're on the manufacturing floor doing certain tasks. There are things that, if you call it a robot, AI, artificial intelligence, pick it that can do certain tasks now mm -hmm. they still have to be taught and programmed mm -hmm. but there's ways to do deep learning so you um, which is scary yet exciting to, that that to know that you can actually create something mm -hmm. that can actually get better at what it does which right now we're using some deep learning security packages so mm -hmm. when there are new security threats out there some of our software will pick it up it doesn't matter how new it is so what's called zero day threats by using deep learning you can actually you know um, it, it can evolve and change over time again not getting that terminator i robot type stuff we're trying to take over the world right. and, and, you know um, the like but where is artificial intelligence going to go i don't know but it's going to make big leaps in the next five years i mean we're getting we're now Five, who would have thought even probably last year or two years ago that private um, enterprises would be shooting off um, spaceships? Right. I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have said, eh, Jetsons are still way off. But that happened, you know, this year yeah. or, or last year. Mm -hmm. So, but, or to land yeah. those ships on a little pad on the ocean? Oh, that's amazing what they can like do. Somebody's good at math. Yes, well, exactly. And there's always a very smart human, actually <laughs> multiple smart people behind that. So, yeah, you can say technology, technology, technology. You need people behind it. Totally. So the jobs will shift. Mm -hmm. It'll be more, you know, um, you have to automate. You have to still monitor. You still have to alert. Um, you know, it, it's like some of the self-driving cars. Accidents happen. You can't just say, eh, I'm going to, you know, mm -hmm. you, you need someone who's actively watching some of that and securing some of that to make sure that it's not hacked or that a problem doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, everything that has, you know, uh, you know, wheels on it or anything that has intelligence in it can fail. Or sorry, mm -hmm. that, it, that has some technology in it. There can be a failure. And so you're going to have people who have to fix those things or who have to monitor those things or continually upgrade and improve those things. So mm -hmm. the jobs will change. Um, with the times, but um, it's going to be, I think, a lot with artificial intelligence yeah. and you know um, what what they call deep learning. Right. Fair. Do you see yourself adding employees? Yes. Okay. Yep. We're 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 in a growth. We're actually um, looking for a um, um, you know sharp uh, technician right now. So we're we're adding an, another you know full time tech um, as we speak. Uh, well, we're looking for a full time tech. All right. Um, and yeah, I see us adding definitely more this year. We've um, we're in growth mode. Um, nice. And so it's nice that. Um, our clients are growing mm -hmm. um, and expanding, as well as new leads are, and new clients are coming in and, and seeing the value of our services. And so, yeah, we're going to be expanding a lot this year. Very cool. So, yes. Um, Kevin, where can people find you? Uh, you can find us um, on, online. You can go to www.petersontechgroup.com. All right. You can email us at info at petersontechgroup.com. You can call us at 608-371-1670. Again, 608-371-1670. Or info at petersontechgroup.com, um, or or sales at petersontechgroup.com, whichever whatever works best. Nice, all the channels. I love. Yes, it. yes. Well, Kevin, thanks for being on the show. This oh, is cool. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure, James. It was a lot of fun. It's you know, IT is just one of those things where it's interesting because when I was dabbling, well, when I had that printer repair yes. company, mm -hmm. <coughs> I rubbed elbows with a lot of IT people, and it was interesting just to watch what they had going on because I'm more mechanical. I can't see <laughs> mechanical stuff in software, so I appreciate that there's people like you that work the magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my team does. They, they do all the magic behind the scenes, yeah. you bet. <laughs> cool. Awesome. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. We're locally underwritten by the Bank of Sun Prairie. Oh, my name is James Cademan, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call. Offering call answering and reception of services for service businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com. As well as draw in customers business coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs looking for growth on the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, the Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur and all of us, available wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Kevin Peterson of Peterson Technology Group, a 
what's that website again? Uh, PetersonTechGroup.com. Easy enough. Past episodes can be found in the morning, noon, and night at the podcast link found at DrawInCustomers.com. Thank you for listening and watching. We'll see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business. Thank you.